Hello everyone. Uh, David Bronstein was a renowned chess author and while well, his book The Zurich International Tournament of 1953 is regarded as one of the greatest chess books ever written as uh, well international masters uh, said that after they read this book uh, they felt their chess strength really improve as Bronstein's comments uh, in this book are well they're amazing. So if if you're looking to improve your game, uh, you know, uh, f feel free to acquire the book, the Zurich International Tournament of 1953, as uh, I've heard only praises uh, about this book. And, well, uh, there's a lot of talk about the strongest chess players who never became world champion. Uh, but uh, David Bronstein really might be the strongest player who never became world champion, as he did win uh, the Candidates Tournament in 1950, and uh, he did challenge Mikhail Botvinnik for the title in 1951. And well, he was this close to winning the to winning the title. The match ended in a draw. Uh, they each won five games, and fourteen games were drawn. So, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I do believe he came the closest to becoming world champion. Uh, but this game I have prepared for you today was played in 1954, and uh, this is uh, the match uh, Argentina versus uh, the Soviet Union. This is round one, and on board one, uh, David Bronstein is facing Miguel Nidorf. And, well, it's always a treat when uh, Nidorf uh, goes for the Nidorf variation. And uh, one other reason this is uh, one of my favorite Bronstein games is uh, I actually used uh, this idea Bronstein uh, had in this game to win a couple of my games. So, let's see this game. And, uh, well, uh, Bronstein was also known for uh, thinking quite a lot, uh, even before making the first move. Uh, he Sometimes he used, like, 15 to 20 minutes before even playing the first move. So let's see this game. We have e4 by Bronstein and c5 by Nidorf, the Sicilian defense. We have knight to f3, d6, uh, we have d4, c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and knight to f6. We have knight to c3, and Nidorf go goes for the Nidorf variation, a6. Uh, we have bishop to g5, we have e6, and here uh, Bronstein plays queen to f3. And this is this, uh, well, famous line, uh, although queen to f3 was the main theory back then. Uh, but uh, today, well, in this position, if you saw my previous video uh, played by uh, David Navarra, uh, he played f4. And this game is the reason why f4 is played today. So, Bronstein goes queen to f3, uh, and we have knight b to d7 by Nidorf. Uh, we have queenside castle, and now queen to c7. And uh, here, uh, well, uh, Gary Kasparov in his book, My Great Predecessors, uh, says that uh, it took Bronstein uh, 58 minutes to make his next move. And uh, after thinking for 58 minutes, he played queen to g3. And, uh, well, it's exactly, this is the exact position uh, why I said that f4 uh, was played in, uh, is now played in that position. Uh, because now uh, black has the option of playing h6 here. And because the queen is now on g3, uh, bishop to h4 is no longer possible because g5 wins a piece here. So after this h6 move, now white has to decide uh, whether he will grab the grab the knight on f6 here or he will retreat with the bishop to e3, for example. Uh, but after he retreats <coughs> to e3, uh, b5 is completely fine for black. Uh, but after this Bronstein's 58-minute uh, move, uh, queen to g3, uh, Nidorf simply continued to play like it was a normal knight of variation, and he played b5. And now Bronstein executes his idea uh, that he had. And it, 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 it's also said uh, that uh, Bronstein took like 40 minutes uh, for his next move. Uh, he played bishop capture some b5. So the idea behind this move is <clears throat> uh, he will sacrifice his piece, uh, well, he will grab two pawns for it, and uh, even three, and he will be left with uh, three passed pawns here, a, b, and c pawn. So we have a captures on b5, and now uh, knight d captures on b5, attacking the queen and also the d6 pawn. And this was the idea of queen to g3. Now the queen is also uh, attacking the d6 square. Uh, we have queen to b8, and now knight captures on d6, and this is with check. We have bishop captures on d6, and now queen captures on d6. Uh, Bronstein uh, sacrificed a piece, but he also wants to exchange queens. Uh, so we have queen captures on d6, and rook captures on d6. And okay, uh, neither has a piece, but uh, this three pass pawns are, are well very strong, and uh, probably most players will will prefer to be white in this position. 
So we have h6 uh, by Bronstein, and uh, perhaps it was uh, because of this h6 move that Bronstein was uh, thinking for so long whether he should or should not go into this variation. Uh, because there were games uh, played in this variation before, and uh, well, bishop captures on f6 was played, and uh, this is Bronstein's real co contribution to this game. He played uh, bishop to d2. So after this move, uh, knight of played bishop to b7, attacking the e4 pawn. We have f3, and already this is very nice, a very nice pawn structure for white here. This is unbreakable uh, for the moment. And uh, here, knight of castle. And uh, I actually, I actually had this exact, this exact position in uh, one of my games, and uh, my opponent uh, played king to e7 here, uh, which is the stronger move than the one Nidorf played, as it's a, uh, it's a very weird idea. Why, why castle here? <clears throat> I mean, king to e7. Uh, this is the end game. The king belongs in the center of the board. Uh, he will be, he will be helping out his pawns and pieces here. On g8, he, he's really not going to do that much. Uh, but okay, after f3, knight of castled, and we have b3, uh, rook f to c8, and uh, king to b2, uh, we have knight to c5, and now bishop to e3, attacking that knight on c5. Uh, we have e5, knight of is uh, creating an outpost for his knight on e6, so he can jump to d4 or f4, uh, depending on what uh, Bronstein plays. Uh, we have rook h to d1. Uh, knight to e6 by Nidorf, and now rook to b6, attacking the bishop on b7. Uh, bishop to c6, and now knight to d5. And uh, now Bronstein is uh, threatening knight to e7 with check, uh, capturing the rook, or if the rook moves, even capturing this bishop that is already attacked by the rook. So, knight of cap uh, captures the knight, bishop captures on d5, and we have e captures on d5. And now Nidorf, uh, now Bronstein creates another pass pawn, and now he has uh, four connected past pawns and this is well this is certainly worth the piece uh, we have knight to c5 and now first rook to b5 attacking the knight twice we have knight f to d7 defending and now c4 and look look at this beautiful pawn chain it stretches across half the board and uh, well uh, this is uh, very hard now to play for Nidorf. Uh, we have uh, e4 uh, bishop captures on c5 knight captures on c5 and f captures on e4 and uh, here knight captures on uh, e4. And, well, in this position, the strongest move for Bronstein would probably be uh, something like a4 maybe, uh, but Bronstein played d6. And uh, he allows neither of a small tactic that uh, will require Bronstein to play a bit more accurately. Uh, as he played rook captures on a2 with check now. Uh, king captures on a2 and now knight to c3 with check, uh, forking the king and the rook. So king to a3, and now knight captures on d1. And okay, c5. And well, it's still winning for white, but uh, you do have to play it precisely. Uh, it's, you know, always better to have an extra pawn uh, on the a-file. So knight to c3, attacking the rook, a rook to a5, and we have knight to d5. And uh, here, Bronstein pushes c6. And well, this is a this is a this is an excellent move as uh, well. Uh, Black can't really play rook captures on c6 and rook captures uh, on d5, uh, as there is uh, well, this is a completely winning endgame for White, so this resource is out of the question. So after c6, he played rook uh, knight to f6, and now we have rook to a6 defending that pawn. Uh, we have king to f8, uh, b4. King to e8, b5, now the c6 pawn is protected, uh, knight to d7, and here knight of gets an idea that uh, he would like to sacrifice his own piece, and in return that he will have some drawing chances. And, well, knight of, uh, this isn't really that bad of a move. After c captures on d7 and king captures on d7, uh, white is only a pawn up, and, uh, <clears throat> well, probably still winning, but, uh, again, you would have to play this very precisely. Uh, but there was no need for this. Uh, after this knight to d7 move, Bronstein simply played uh, rook to a7. Now there is a threat of, uh, of course, c captures on d7 would check. So rook to b8 is played. Now we have rook to d rook captures on d7, uh, rook captures on b5. Uh, we have rook to a7 threatening rook a8 to checkmate. So rook to b8 is played, and now d7 check, and this wins the game immediately. If uh, if king goes to d8, then simply c7 wins the rook, so we have king uh, to e7, and now uh, pawn to d8, promoting to a queen with a double check from the queen and the rook. 
king captures on d8 and now c7 and this is a check and also attacking the black rook so in this position uh, Miguel Nidorf resigned and uh, Bronstein won this brilliant game so yeah uh, that's the game I do hope you enjoyed it uh, I would like to thank David uh, Fakus for your contribution to my channel I really appreciate it thank you a lot sir and yeah as usual you can check two of my previous videos here uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon